Hi, everybody. It's Marilyn. Um, do we have any audio for this? I'm hoping we might. Yes, thank you. Hello, everybody. This is Marilyn, and it is time for the noon edition of Welcome to My World. This is the 24th of March, which is a Thursday. And so here we are in the land of, um, I don't know, some more chop today. How about that? Would you buy chop? Um, these markets really sold off overnight and early this morning. And then they took a little uh, upward bounce. I guess uh, often these uh, U.S. indices around 10.30 or 11 will turn around, and they sure did today right on the 10.30 mark. Crude oil has been down and down and down. It's This is still a hangover from yesterday's um, inventory. The build was quite a bit more than what they had anticipated. So um, we'll see. I... I'm thinking it may be coming up with um, with some of the reality coming into it about uh, a new, it seems like there's a new resolve to do something about getting these fruitcakes in the Middle East put out of business and they're, they're funding themselves through crude oil. So if those oil fields do take it, get taken out, um, it will, I'm sure rock the price of crude oil and very, very quickly too. Doesn't mean it's going to go up, doesn't mean it's going to go down. I'm just thinking it probably have quite a bit of volatility in it. Um, the the trade of the morning, which um, unfortunately I took in demo, but I will show you this because I'm getting more and more enthusiastic about this. Very cool trade. Um, I think, Ezra, you wanted to know about my uh, uh, six-tick bond chart. Now, you, this until you've practiced peeing a lot, uh, bonds takes them forever to do anything, forever. So you do have to have a lot of patience. But... What I am discovering is the apex indicators make trading bonds um, pretty darn worth your while. I do not put the um, trend catcher entry mark, these yellow markers. These are, I'll show you where they are. They are right here on the trend catcher and I have everything turned off except for the colors for the lines and the live confirmation I want the confirmation I don't care I mean I'm smart enough to tell if it's going up or down I don't need trend catcher to tell me that um, but I want to know where those entry markers are so this is how I have that set and uh, depending on, like this happened at 3.20 in the morning. Well, you know what? That kind of lets me out. But here, when when bonds put, this was about uh, 8.45. It came up here, made this X. And then when I looked at this thing, it was um, this sling that had gone way down here. So usually those are going to be pretty good and i think i took this right at the um right at the the uh, deviation level right here there's a deviation i know this is kind of hard to see so much stuff but this is a the, the 0 0.7 deviation right here after it had gone down and come back up because it was really putting in this sling right here. So I took it right in here, and I, um, my first guesstimate was that I had plenty of room to go to the, the next um, 
a deviation level, but when it came, it it really moved fairly quickly, and it will do this sometimes between 8:30 and 9, 8:30 and 9:15, 9:30. All of a sudden, it will move, and then the paint starts drying. But when it came through here, I just kind of trailed the stop, and I think I got out with uh, 15 ticks stuck out on this. Um, Rob, if you go to your Hotcom icon and mouse over it, you'll get uh, the charts that are broadcast. So anyway, uh, this I did not take down, and if you notice, this trend catcher marker right here coincided right here with a deviation and then this cell zone painted right here. So I I don't know that it's so important um, that you use one tick away or two ticks or something like you would in the indices. Um, because if you get 10 ticks off of bonds, be happy about it. If you get more, uh, more power to you. But when when you have a, a green E, and this one showed up at whatever time, 3.30 or something, and then you got this wonderful C's sling right here, that's a pretty safe uh, trade to take up. And when you get 10 ticks, you can be real, you start tightening that stop up. That's what I did. And when it got up to 15, I thought, you know what? Um, that's enough. I'm, I'm going to take my 15 and get out. But this down would have been wonderful uh, because from um, about 63.29 down to settlement, um, you might have had to sit through this. I didn't watch it closely enough to see if it got to settlement and then came up off of it. But anyway, um, I'm liking that more and more. And then in, in the afternoon, I don't pay any attention to it. I I have it moved. So um, I think I mentioned yesterday that the uh, today was all day a banking holiday in Australia. The Aussie dollar is very flat. It might change up a little bit later, but um, I don't expect to see a lot of volume um, come into this stuff this afternoon. People are winding down. If you have not already um, noticed this, tomorrow is a holiday for both uh, the Nadex and for the CME all day. So there will be no trading whatsoever. Trading will pick up again at the um, the the Asian session open on Sunday for the US people. So that's about it. We we've had um, we've had a lot of of chop and it's this is what happens when there's no volume to speak of and I know Daryl goes on and on and on about volume but it that's well worth paying attention to because it really does matter it really does matter so um, I think that's about it Monday morning we don't have a lot there will be some economic numbers that come out at uh, 8.30, but they're not real huge ones. And then we'll have to wait until later in the week and see. But I can tell you that next, I think Thursday is the last uh, day of the month. And usually when it comes to the last couple of days of the month, there might be some real nice trading opportunities in the indices because there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of big money moving into and out of and getting repositioned. It's the end of the quarter. And so the the big, you know, the, the pension fund managers and the big 
fund managers and the hedge fund guys and all that stuff, they are repositioning money to uh, close out their first quarter books, and they want to look as good as they can. So just kind of keep that in mind. There might be a little more volatility than usual going into the end of any quarter month. So we'll see this again the end of June and the end of September. And then that week between Christmas and New Year's, uh, that's what's happening because it, it, that can be a really good trading time too. So anyway, um, I hope, oh, oh, I know, somebody asked a really good question in the um, chat earlier about trailing stops. And I I typed a little blurb in there, and I, I don't know if that was as clear as mud to everybody, but the, the whole purpose of trailing a stop is to protect yourself. So um, with that in mind, personally, I like to have the the uh, ATM strategy that's on your chart trader or um, and I for those of you who don't know how to find that thing I think it's uh, I'm not sure how you find it oh I don't have it turned on on these charts here let me turn it on click on this little arrow thing over here and it you can you can make a strategy on here so you can customize it. So, for instance, on a, a crude oil, it'll you can set this, and then you right-click on it. There's a whole uh, Ninja has a, a whole video on how you use that thing. But what I like about it is that it shows up on your chart, so you can drag those little bubble things, and you can move your right on the chart you can move your stop so for instance if you're going short um, let's just pick one right here at this E this is a great E and the MVP and everything's right right here and once it's cleared this big magnet then um, you've got a trade so let's just say you entered three ticks below the E which is about one or two ticks, I think, below this big magnet. And you, I've got a 15 tick stop loss. Okay, if you put your stop loss up here at the top of the E for a little bit, and you let it get down here, and it keeps going, and you see it puts in this X, the first thing you want to do is take that bubble with the stop loss in it and move it down to this magnet so at least you're at break even worst case scenario you won't take a loss if you move it down a couple of ticks below there you want to have some confidence that it's not going to come up and knock you out and then go of course typically of what it does goes in your direction but if you Give it enough room till you're comfortable. On crude oil, usually about uh, 12 ticks to break even and 15, maybe a couple of ticks below. And then trail it down with whatever you're comfortable with. Um, Daryl uses the MVP. Well, you know, that's a pretty darn big stop loss for me. I, I don't like that. I can't do that. So I'll let it go down here. And when it's cleared, uh, the next deviation or the next big magnet or the next whatever it is, going northbound here. Once it's cleared, if you, if you took this, um, say with the MVP arrow, and you took it, once it's cleared this um, EMA and there's a deviation level right here, then you can move your stop loss right up to that, and it's probably going to at least give you three or four ticks that are protected 
And if you notice on Lori's charts when she marks them, she puts where she's been stopped out, um, protecting five ticks and protecting ten ticks or whatever it is that she puts on there. Well, that's what she means. She's moved her stop loss down to protect herself, and the thing came up and hit her when she kind of wished it didn't, but it did. But at least she got out with five ticks. I try to use two because it, it pays the bills. You want two ticks in your favor at least because worst case scenario, you won't take a loss on the trade and you get your trade paid for. Um, this is a business and the exchange uh, charges fees to use their service. So at least you get those fees paid and you're you're clear of all that. So I hope that helps a little bit. Anyway, I hope everyone has a happy and a safe uh, long weekend and a, a wonderful Easter day. And so we'll all be back here on Monday. I am, I imagine we're going to have some volatility and some volume, which will be more than welcome because volume makes the bus driver run. So anyway, I will see you on Monday about noon. Thanks. This has been my view from my world in Apex land, brought to you by Apex Investing. Thanks. <laughs>